All right, Trey, first of all, start things off. You had a video that came out, I think, on Father's Day. <laughs> did you think when you saw that video for the first time with you and your daughter that it was going to blow up the way it did? I did not. My first time seeing it was on Father's Day itself. My girlfriend took a, a video of me and my daughter. I didn't even think anything of it. She was behind me doing it. I didn't even see it until she did it. It's a blessing and a curse because I wanted to be, <laughs> wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer. I know she sees me playing sports, and I know she's going to play sports, but I just want to keep her motivated to be in a uh, classroom as much as I can. So what team were you a fan of growing up before well, you got to the Seahawks? Growing up, I was a fan of whoever my uncle played for. I was a Bills fan, which sounds really crazy. I was a Houston Texans fan before they were on top. And um, uh, he played for the Eagles, he played for the Rams. Anywhere he was, I had a jersey from that team. So that's pretty cool, too. I mean, that you know, your, your uncle was a first round pick back in the day. Mm -hmm. Were there any other players, though, that you kind of gravitated to as you got older that you looked at and said, hey, I want to be like that guy someday? Yeah, Sean Taylor. Uh, let him rest in peace. That was somebody I truly looked up to. I was so hurt when he died. It was like I lost somebody I really knew just because he was, he was the person I wanted to be. He was a big body safety before we were known in the NFL. And, he played so fast and so physical. I just wanted to be like him. Well, it's a good role model to look up to. All right, what were your expectations going into your rookie year? Did you plan on being a starter, or was that something that, you know, you just kind of had to work your butt off in order to attain that spot? Uh, that's it's crazy. Me and my dad were talking about that the other day. It's just I went up there with the mindset that I wasn't coming home without being on the team. And uh, I did everything right. I did what Coach Rackley at Judson told me and Coach Smith. From Coach Gundy, I just I kept pounding the clock. I just kept doing everything right, kept doing everything right, and they finally trusted me. And I think it happened sooner than we all expected. I started week one and we went forward. Okay, so wait a second. You were drafted. They weren't going to cut you, but but you didn't go in with that mindset, huh? I I'm going in with the same mindset right now that you know they're trying to replace me, and I just want to be the best. And anytime I won't feel like I'm the best, I'm not playing football anymore. So I, I don't think I ever feel like that. All right. Well, from a team standpoint, you know, there weren't a lot of people thinking that you guys were going to do anything last year. You know, look, they're rebuilding. They lost this guy. They lost that guy. What were the expectations early on from a group perspective? Did you guys hear any of that chatter? And, you know, what did you see when you were in practice every day? Did you think that this, that this was going to be a squad that could... Make it I, to the postseason? I think it, we kind of surprised ourselves a lot because um, we went into the preseason. We, we lost every preseason game, and then we lost the first two games of the season. But we were so close to winning and so close to finally clicking. When we, we, we knew when we clicked it was going to be special, and we hit our strides at the right time, and we just keep building now. So that Cowboy game then was your first victory. Yes. So and you had that to know was, that they had a pretty good squad too. Oh, yeah, so I mean, to sure. dominate them kind of like the way you guys did, sure. they had to open some eyes, right? Oh yeah, that was just like a, actually, I think it was the week we played the Rams. The Rams are like this hot team and uh, I went, we lost to them both times, but we were supposed to win both games. They know that, we know that. And uh, yeah, we were just, we were playing with a Super Bowl team and we were so young, nobody knows who we were. It, it was kind of our clicking point. Okay, so who were some of the veteran guys in that room that you leaned on? Was there anybody on that team that took you under their wing and kind of, you know, said, hey, man, look out um, for this, look out for that? Brandon Marshall. We still talk to this day. He was somebody, and he's, on, he's a receiver. He was just somebody I looked up to as a kid. He was so big and everything, so physical. He was the best. And I always asked him what his mindset was, and he, he actually loved how many questions I asked him. You know, he's kind of a cocky guy. So me recognizing how good he was and him f being the person he is, he took me under his wing a lot. He's still telling me a lot of stuff that he thinks I was good at and what he thinks I can get better at. What were some of your very best memories from year one in the NFL? I would say my first turnover just versus the, uh, the Cardinals. David Johnson was Pro Bowl running back. And I went up, made a tackle, and uh, I felt the ball like kind of loose. I pulled it out, and we recovered it. And that's something we just thrive on with the Seahawks is getting the ball. And I finally got one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys, to start this year, again, you're losing some really good football players on the defensive side of the ball. What have you seen during OTAs and mini camps that would lead you to believe that you guys aren't going to miss much of a beat when you're talking about losing to guys like Frank or some of these other guys that you lost? It, it just comes down to the style of play. We're the bunch right now that we just believe in each other. They just pound the rock. They just keep doing what they got to do. And I know I trust them. They're going to make plays when they have to. 
Was there any doubt in your mind going in that you could play at this level? I mean, even early on when you're having to make a position change. No, never. I never doubted myself as much as, as hard as I am on myself. I never doubted myself that I could do it. It was just to the fact that I have to do it. And the time was now. It wasn't, I have a couple months to get ready. Everything just kind of got thrown at me and it, it happened so fast. This year, I actually have a lot of receivers that are top five in my opinion. So. I would say a lot of those teams, I'm not, gonna say, I'm not gonna say my rankings or anything, but we do play in Cleveland and they have a lot of hype right now. So I get to go against Odell and Jarvis and Baker again. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I'm still looking for my first win against Baker. Does that stuff carry over in, into uh, the league too? Definitely for me. I don't know, I can't speak for everybody else, but definitely for me. <laughs> okay. What did you learn about yourself after one year playing in the NFL? Anything? You do find out a lot about yourself when, uh, the seasons are so much longer in college and high school. Um, yeah, 16 games, I remember I was with my girlfriend again, my daughter, and they go to sleep so early and everything, but I was still up watching film and it, it just kept going and going and going. And I ended up playing like 20 something games as a rookie. Of course, I count the preseason, a lot sure. of people don't. I just, uh, it's so much longer, it's so much taxing on your body. You just find out if you truly love a sport, or if you truly love what you're doing when you're so tired that you got to do something you don't want to eat or you don't have to sleep right now. You got to keep doing what you're doing. I just, I loved everything about it. Uh -huh. It's a different beast. Yeah, it's, it's way more physical. You feel every hit and uh, the slim body that they were talking about. Yeah, it took a little punishing a little bit, but yeah, I got through it. <laughs> all right, well, all the guys that are playing in the league, they're from the area code. Mm. Why is it that you guys are so tight? And they're all pulling for each other and they're all trying to hype each other at the end of the day. It's just something that I always hold myself accountable that I will be supportive of anybody that is supportive of me. I just, I want to see everybody do what they love to do and have fun doing it. You know, it was never a thing where I wish I was doing something better than somebody. It was just that we're working just as hard. I want them to get just as much shine as me. Well, and I guess that kind of morphs into what you're trying to yeah. build. You have a vision, I, I, right? I, for sure. You know, I, um, I, tell, I work out with the kids at Judson for a couple, for about a week. When I was in high school, as cocky as this may sound, I'm not cocky, I'm the most humble person you can meet, I think, but I always knew I was going to college. I always knew I was going to play big D1 ball, no matter what. It was, it was the vision of me playing in the league, what team I was going to play for and what that. I always knew what I had. I had the vision in my mind and the vision. My family saw it for me. I saw it for myself. I just knew things were going to turn over. You know, I had a couple of hard things in my life, just like everybody else will. It's just how you see it, how you see it, and how you keep working through it. It makes you who you are. Okay, so you have a brand, visionary, right? Yeah, and visionary. And tells yes, articles of clothing and other stuff, but you also talk about what a seven on seven. You're yeah, start off? I want. I just want to help out my city as much as I can. Like I said, I will be. I'm gonna have some clothes just for everything and my sister coaches girls basketball i'm gonna uh, try to take over them and sponsor them as much as i can and then like i said the 707 thing i'm gonna, I'm gonna have a team i'm gonna have an open tryout and i'm gonna just take the best guys from around the city different age groups and um we're gonna go travel and we're gonna go take over the world we're gonna go show <laughs> what san antonio ball is what it's really about it's not houston it's not dallas it's right here in San Antonio. We, we can compete with the best and i want them to see it early well why is that so important to you i just like I said, man, I, I love everything about San Antonio. The, the boring atmosphere, the boring spurs. <laughs> man, it's, it's whatever, we win. Right? We win down here and it's, it's a winning atmosphere, it's a winning vibe, and it's a loving vibe, it's a loving family. I feel like once you know each other in San Antonio, it's so big, but it's so small. Everybody knows each other from your parents to your kids. And I just wanna keep, I just wanna keep having it grow. And if I can do something for it, I will do it.